Hey, what is up guys? I'm Gunnix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to apply impulse to rigid bodies in Godot. So there are two different ways I'm going to be teaching how to do this today. So the first one's going to be a lot more generalized, where I just teach the basics of applying impulse to a rigid body. And then the second thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be teaching you guys how to actually allow your player to push around an object using the apply impulse function. So if you guys do enjoy this tutorial, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by creating a new scene. So as you guys can see here, I've actually already got like a basic level already set up. It's just a floor. And then um, we're going to be adding the player into it soon. I've already got a player already set up as well. But yeah, we will be adding that into the level soon when we do get to doing that in the, t in the tutorial. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna create a new scene and it's going to be a 3D scene. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go right click on your node 3D here. And then you wanna go change the type of the node. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be changing the type of a node to a rigid body 3D. So now when you've done that, um, you can rename it if you want to, just double click. Uh, I'm going to be renaming this to box, since uh, my rigid body 3D is just going to be a box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click again, then we're going to go add child node. And then this time we're going to be adding a collision shape 3D. So collision shape 3Ds apply collision to our object. So depending on the shape that you set for your collision shape, that will be the type of collision that is applied to that object. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a box shape 3D for my collision. Uh, you guys can do what you want, of course. It doesn't really matter. And then uh, we're going to uh, click on the parent node here again. Then we're going to go right click, add child node. And this time I'm going to add a mesh instance 3D. So then our object actually has visuals. And uh, I'm just going to be using a box mesh for this. Again, you guys can use what you want to, of course, for uh, your object. And then uh, be sure to save your scene as well, um, just by pressing Control and S at the same time. I do recommend creating a scenes folder. You can just uh, press the little icon here to create a new folder. And uh, then just saving your scene into your scenes folder, as so. So then what we're going to do is we're going to click onto our uh, parent node here again. And then where it says script empty on the inspector menu, you want to click where it says empty, new script, and then we're going to create a new script. So I do recommend that you do create a new scripts folder if you haven't, oh, sorry. Uh, I do recommend that you create a scripts folder if you haven't already. You can just click on the folder here in order to do that. And then you just press the little icon here to create a new folder if you haven't already. But yeah, so um, I'm just going to be typing in scripts here since I've already got a scripts folder. So I'm just going to be saving it into that specific path. Then I'm going to go create. And boom! So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get rid of the ready function since we won't be needing this. And then uh, with the physics, uh, I mean with the physics, with the uh, process function here, what we're going to be doing is um, uh, just after the underscore, we're going to be adding in physics and then underscore again. So then it is physics process. So this is now the physics process function. And the reason as to why we're doing this is because when we're working with physics in our scripts, we want to make sure that we do it in the physics process function. So then uh, all that is, you know, all okay and nothing's wrong there. So yeah. So what we're going to do for this example in the tutorial is we're going to be pressing uh, some keys and depending on what keys we press, that will apply impulse to our object in certain directions. So if you haven't already in your project, uh, what you want to do is you want to go project, then project settings. Then as you can see here, we have our input map. So if, you, if you're not already on the input map tab, uh, what you do is you just switch from general to input map and then boom, you see what I'm seeing here. So if you don't already have inputs here, you do want to add actions of your own. So as you can see, I've got up, down, left, right, jump and interaction, which um, as you can see for my uh, up action, the W key is assigned, then for down it's S, then left it's A, then right it's D. Jump is space, of course, and interact is E. So if you haven't already done that, basically um, here's how you do add your own inputs. So for example, you might type in something like crouch, and then you just press the plus icon on your action, and then you press a key, and then that key will now be assigned to that action. So I just pressed the left control key, so now the control key is assigned to my crouch action, if I you know, want to make my player crouch. 
So what we're going to do here in the physics process function is we're going to write if input dot is action just pressed and I'm going to be doing up as an example for this and then we're going to do the two dots and an indent and so when it comes to applying impulse to an object in Godot to a rigid body in Godot um, it is very very simple it's literally only a singular line of code so what we do is we go apply underscore impulse and then what we do is we want to apply the direction and the speed of which the impulse is applied. So what I'm going to do here for this example is I'm going to do basis.z since that will be uh, moving the object on its z axis which I'm pretty sure is forward in Godot. And then you want to do multiplied by the speed of which you want the impulse to be applied. So for this example I'm going to be doing 5.0 you guys can do what you want to of course and then boom so that there is how you apply impulse to a, a rigid body 3D in Godot so we've just applied impulse on the basis.z on the uh, nodes z axis so yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy these lines of code here then I'm going to paste them a few times because I am going to apply impulse to the object um, in other directions as well so, for example, if we press down, what will happen is our object will go backwards. So what we'll do is we'll put the uh, negative symbol, the minus symbol, out the front of basis.z, and then that will actually make our object go uh, in the opposite direction to if we press the up key. And then I'm going to do left and right as well. So this will basically make our object move on its x, back, on its, uh, x axis. So we're going to do basis.x for these. There we go, basis.x. And then uh, for either the left or right, we can just put a negative symbol, a minus symbol out the front, and then boom, it's all good. One other thing I do want to do as well is uh, apply impulse to the y-axis, so we will do that where we just do jump. And then we go basis.y, so we're going to get rid of that negative symbol, then basis.y, and boom. So what we're going to do now is we are going to test this out since I'm pretty sure this is done. If there's anything that I've forgotten, I will fix it up, of course. But uh, we're going to go to our level scene. Then what we're going to do is we're then going to add in our box, just like so. There we go. There's our box. Then we're going to go add a camera 3D into our scene. There we go. There's a camera 3D. And then I'm just going to position this in a way so then it is watching our box. So I think that should be probably good enough. And now that we've got everything all set up, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, press this icon here in order to test our scene and see how everything goes. So when I press W, as you can see, oh, so, so when I press W and S, our object is moving forwards and backwards. And then when I press the A key, it moves that way. Then, well, the left and right are inverted. But um, as you can see, when I press D, it goes left. And then when I press A, it goes right. And then if I press space, it jumps up. So yeah. So that there is how you apply impulse. And oh, I just realized too, this would be good for like a Flappy Bird game. When you apply impulse to the Y-axis. Hey guys, if you want to make a Flappy Bird game, this is how... Uh, how you do it, I guess. I, I, I just realized this is actually good for making a Flappy Bird game. But yeah, so that there is how you apply some basic impulse to a rigid body 3D in Godot. Um, it's starting to move off screen and stuff now, but there it is, our little white cube. So yeah, so now I am going to move on to the second part of this tutorial, which will be me showing you guys how to actually allow your player to push around an object. So let's get to doing that. Alright, so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be allowing our player to actually push around our cube. So let's get to doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our player scene. And then uh, if you're doing first person, make sure that uh, you right click on your player's head. And then you go add child node and then raycast 3D. If you're doing it third person, uh, if you just add the raycast to your uh, regular player parent node, that should be totally fine. But yeah, so what we're going to do is uh, we are going to uh, rotate the raycast now and then scale it so then it's perfect for our player interaction. So I think something like that should be alright for our player's raycast. So now what we're going to do is um, with, our, uh, with our script we did for our uh, physics object, what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a new function for this. 
and we're just going to call this push object. And then in parentheses, you want to do player. And then what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go apply underscore impulse. And then we're going to do negative player dot basis dot z. And the reason as to why we're doing this is because what we're going to be doing is this function, uh, the push object function, it will get our player object. And then what will happen is it will apply impulse on our object. So then it is pushed away from the player. So what a negative player dot basis dot z does is it basically pushes the object away from the player. And then we can multiply that by something like 5.0, for example. And there we go. So that there is going to be the function we do use for applying impulse to push the object away from the player. So when it comes to this stuff, we can just uh, remove this part of the script. We don't really need this anymore. If you guys uh, need that, then, uh, you know, it's totally fine. You can look at uh, the earlier part of the, t the tutorial where I did that. So what we're going to do now is we are now going to go to our player raycast. So make sure that your player raycast is selected. And we're going to create a script for this now. So I'm just going to call it raycast. And then I'm going to save it into my scripts folder. And go create. There we go. So we are going to get rid of the ready function. We probably won't need that. And then we can just go uh, physics underscore process there since this will be in the physics process function. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go if is underscore colliding. So is underscore colliding is a method for the Raycast 3D. And basically what it does is it checks if the Raycast is colliding with anything. So if the Raycast is colliding with an object, what we'll do is we'll create a new variable called hit. And then this will equal to get underscore collider. So what this is doing is if our raycast is colliding with a static body 3D or a rigid body 3D or a character body 3D, just a general object that can be interacted with in the game world, well, what will happen is um, if our raycast is uh, colliding with something, we'll be creating a new variable called hit, which will then get the collider of that object that the raycast is hitting. So hit will equal to the object that the raycast is hitting. And then what will happen is we'll go check if hit dot has underscore method. And then what you want to do here is you want to type in the method that we're uh, using for pushing the object. So for us, it's just push object. So you want to type in a uh, push object if that is the name of your method. Otherwise, just type in whatever name of your method the uh, put, uh, you're using to push the uh, object. And we're going to do the two dots to indent. So if the uh, object that our raycast is hitting has the method push object, what will happen is if we go if input dot is action just pressed, interact. So if we press the interact action, if you don't already have an interact action, just set one in the input map, of course, like I showed earlier. And I'm going to do two dots again to indent. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go hit dot push underscore object. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go get underscore parent. So the parent object of our uh, raycast is the head. And then we're going to do get underscore parent again in order to get the player. And what this is doing, so when we do hit dot push object and then we do the uh, get parent dot get parent in the parentheses, what we're doing is we are basically assigning our player to the script here. So see how in the parentheses we have player? Well, when we uh, make the push object uh, function happen, we need to assign that with something. And that is going to be our player. And since our script is attached to the raycast, when we do get parent dot get parent, that will get the head and then our actual player object. So yeah, so make sure that you do uh, do get parent dot get parent in order to assign the player object to the push object function. And uh, yeah, that should be all we need to do there for now. Um, what we can do now is we can now go to our level and we can add the player into the scene. If there's anything I've forgotten, I will uh, get to, you know, finishing it off, of course. But that should be all that we need to do for now. And boom. Also, something that I just remembered as well is I should probably get rid of this uh, camera 3D here. There we go. So now uh, we can actually use our player's camera. Alright, so let's go test this out again. 
and here we are. So as you can see, we are now in the scene. And if we look at our object and then we push it, it gets pushed in the opposite direction of the player. So when I get close enough to the object where my raycast is looking at it, if I press E, it pushes the object along. And yeah, that's pretty much how you do that. So anyways guys, that's the end of this tutorial. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more tutorials like this. And I'll be sure to see you all in the next one. Bye bye